Welcome back. Uh, today we have a Wells Gardner K7500, 27 inch 7500. Uh, just ignore this, it says 9400. Um, this, that's not what's in here. <laughs> I don't, I don't offer service or work on these because I don't, I don't have a picture tube right now to test these. Plus it's very difficult to uh, get these running. But So disregard that, it's actually a 7500. And uh, this was sent to me along with the K7400 in the previous video. Uh, this one was sent to me and the, the note that was attached to it said uh, it has some collapse <clears throat> it has some collapse and the neck board has uh, all the color transistors are loose and the red is stuck on now I assume that means it's an all red image uh, I can't say for sure so what we'll do is we'll do some quick inspection and because it uh, allegedly fires up and runs I think we'll just do some quick inspection <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and get it hooked up so we can see what it's doing uh, before then we can repair it and check out how well it works after So let's go ahead and get it all opened up and I'm sorry for the extra noise over here my in preparation my uh, Desoldering station and everything is, op is operational over here. So let's uh, go ahead and just get this unwrapped here uh, Packing tape is my nemesis Yikes, this is a dirty one. This looks like it was in a bar or somewhere where there was a lot of smoking done because it's very brown. Yeah, this is... Look how brown this is. I don't know if you can tell. It's awful. It's just, it's brown. Even the heat sinks are brown instead of black. It's hard to see on camera. The neck socket is brown. It's not dust or dirt. It's like discoloration. Even the heart, the wires, instead of being gray, are brown. Uh, do I have another one for, yeah, see? Here's that 7400 I just fixed, and look at the Look at the difference here. I think this was in an, either a bar or a heavy smoker environment because this is what it should look like and this is what you got. So something, I mean even the remote harness, here's, look at this. Wow. Can't say I ever come across one that was that's like this before. Does it smell like smoke? Uh, no, it smells like plastic. Hmm. That's just very odd. Um, our neck neck board is a, a connector is a bit bent here. Mm. Uh, so a quick quick uh, tutorial on the 7500 here is there's going to be a sticker here. It says replace with K7500 chassis only. And the reason that they have these is because the 7500 is not like the 7400, the U2000, the U5000. You can take those and swap those around with their two respective tubes and yokes all day long, play musical chassis and everything will be just fine. But the K7500 is medium resolution only and it is only compatible with the K7500 yoke. So you cannot use the 7500 on a U5000 yoke or um, a, a Neotech 2701 I think it is as a, a medium res. You cannot use the 7500 on any yoke other than a 7500 yoke and so that's why this sticker is on there you can it'll damage the yoke and or chassis it doesn't work that way so you can't do that uh, you can't you can't swap them around uh, will, willy nilly and uh, they were kind enough to send me the entire frame here uh, and this has the 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 uh, transistor here for the width now I may do a <laughs> I may do a separate video here. You may see, you may watch this video, and very shortly you'll see another video that's very short that discusses this thing because I want to talk about what this does. So, on any normal standard, like let's pull the 7400 up here again. On the 7400 here, 
this transistor that's right here, uh, this one right here, this is your width transistor. This transistor is responsible for allowing you to adjust your width size. So on your remote board, you've got a, a, a pot here that says width right here on the edge. When you adjust that pot, the image, image increases and decreases on your width. Now, for some reason, on the 7500, Wells Gardner decided to <clears throat> install this jumper wire. So you see there's no transistor there. They put a jumper harness and it runs to a remote mount type of setup. Now, why they did that, I don't know. I don't know the documentation on why they did that. <clears throat> I can't say. But uh, they remote mounted that transistor all the way over here. So if you don't have this hooked up, and it has to be hooked up this way. If you take this off and turn it around and hook it up, it won't work. This has to be hooked up in order for you to have width control. So if you have a 7500 and you don't have this hooked up, you have to have, or you won't be able to adjust your width. <clears throat> so you have to have this plugged in. Uh, and the part number on that is, let's see if we can zoom in and get it here. The part number on this, there you go, BDX. 5.3 Bravo. Now if we grab the 7400 and look at it, <clears throat> it is, uh, if we can, uh, are we going to be able to see this here? Let's try. Can we get closer? Nope. It appears to be the same, it should be the same transistor. But that one's a bit haggard looking and I can't quite get it in frame there. Uh, let me see. Yep, same part number. So, if you're missing this, that's what you should get. The BDX 5.3 Bravo. All right, so having gone over all that, that explains your width control. If you try to adjust your width and nothing happens, you got to make sure it's, it's plugged in. Now, I've always wanted to do some experimenting and see if I could take that transistor and remove all this and just remount that transistor in here against the heatsink, and it would absolutely work. It's just a jumper wire, but why they decided to move it away and not have it on the chassis, I have no idea. I don't understand the logic, because if they've got it on the 7400, 2000, 5000 right there, why does they need remote remote mounted on the 7500? I don't know, but uh, I will also say uh, someone's already got this disconnected, so we'll inspect our pots here. They seem okay. I will also say that uh, the only real difference between the 7500 and the I'm sorry, the 25 inch 7500 and the 27 inch 7500 is the only difference I'm aware of is this little pin cushion board. <clears throat> For the 27 is 7500, uh, they have this little pincushion board on here. Now it also is on the 7400 and other, other models, but for all intents and purposes, there really is no difference that I'm aware of. Don't quote me, that's why this is the amateur channel, but there's absolutely no difference between the 25 inch 7500 and the 27 inch 7500, other than on the 727 inch, they put this little board on there. And all this is is for pincushion. Now, pincushion is the effect of having a square image versus round sides. So if you adjust these two pots here on this board, it'll take your square image and make it round to fit the curvature of the picture tube. Uh, but a lot of the 7500s that are 27 inch, are they're not a, a round tube, they're more of a square tube. So they put this in here to kind of adjust for that. But if you take this and just remove it, what'll happen is it'll automatically snap back to a completely square image. So if you have this hooked up and it's your your tube or your image is a bit too round and you can't adjust it out, just plop it off of there and it should go right back to the, the maximum setting of squareness, if that makes sense. Uh, but we'll go ahead and leave it on there for now, uh, just because it's supposed to be there for the 27 inch. Um, but also how you can identify 27 versus 25 is there's a decal on the side here. And if we look, you can see <coughs> WGM 2775. Let's get there. You go. WGM. It's Wells Gardner monitors 27 inch K7500. So that's how you can differentiate between what these chassis are. K7500 
Case in point, here's the 7400, and you can see here, Wells Gardner Monitor 25 inch K7400. So that's how you can tell what these are. <clears throat> Quick and easy way to do it. All right, so let's just take a look here now that we've gone all over all of that. And let's uh, <clears throat> just go ahead and see what we're working with here. Uh, someone's somebody has done a cap kit <clears throat> it appears to be some type of odd uh, hodgepodge of caps but it's absolutely been capped so we may not have to do that I'll have to go over and make sure the caps are all the right rating oh I don't think anyone changed this cap this cap right here that one has not been changed out Absolutely not. That's the original one. Um, this is a much... The cap that goes in here, this cap right here, is that damaged? What the heck is going on with that? This is supposed to be a... Uh, I think this is a... 150 volt 22? No. This is a 100 volt 22, if memory serves. Uh, this cap is a 100 volt cap. 22 microfarad and it's much smaller than this I don't know what's going on with that um, I can't tell what the rating is plus it appears to be damaged I don't know what see that there something's weird about that I don't know what's going on but that should be a hundred volt 22 if I recall okay right there we can see 22 22 UF so at least it's the right rating but all these caps have been changed, so the cap kit's been done. I don't know how well of a job I haven't obviously taken it off of here and turned it over yet. <clears throat> but the word on the street is that it functions, but it has some collapse and uh, red is stuck on. So I think we'll not mess with it. We'll just go ahead and hook it up and see what it does. As far as the all red here, red being stuck on, <clears throat> let's take this off and... You said all these were loose. Well, yeah, they're all loose. Nope, that just broke. That's awesome. But that's okay. I literally have uh, 300 of these things. <laughs> so, uh, we'll put a good one back on. Okay, let's go ahead and just disconnect this. And take a look here. Um, obviously a high hour. A high hour one. That's not so bad. That's not so bad and that's not... None of these are that bad. They're all cattywampus and everything, but they're not that bad. I mean, they're not loose as a goose. The traces aren't burned up. The traces have popped off, like they always do, because these don't sit flat. You can see they're all different heights, and people move them around, they get hit, and they break the traces off. That's common, but they're still all intact. <clears throat> so we may just need to simply glue them back down, flatten these out, straighten them up, and be good to go. But why it's got all red, I don't know. Uh, part of the... Part of the... Uh, normal process for me when I work on these is I will reflow all of these header pins here for the neck connection. These header pins here that run to the... I, I reflow all these and I reflow all the, the pins here for the, um, the IC that controls the RGB encoder. I reflow all of this here. I reflow all of these transistors. I reflow all the connections here for the resistors. Uh, I reflow all the connections for the RGB pots. All the normal stuff that you would do, I reflow all the pins for the uh, the CRT connection for the neck. And uh, just a general inspection everywhere else, but <clears throat> I don't see anything immediately as to what would cause an all red screen. So, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to actually do any work to this. <clears throat> Everything appears to be intact. If any of these traces were broken, you would have missing color. Let's say if one of these traces were broken, Let's say for uh, this one. I believe this is for 
blue. Uh, this, these traces run down here to this one. These run down here to this one. These run down here to this one. So this is the red. This is the green. This is the blue. Let's say if one of these traces were broken for the blue, you'd have uh, no blue. So it's not an issue of having an open trace if you have an all red screen. If an all red screen, you've either got a, a shorted red transistor or a shorted red gun in the uh, in the tube that this is being used on. So I think what I'm going to do is just uh, leave it the way that it is, the way that it is out of the wrapping. We're going to get a picture tube, get this all hooked back up, and we're going to turn it on just see what it does. Because that's what I'm interested in. And then we can fix it, and then we'll have a good comparison between before and after. Now normally, when I get a lot of these chassis, they're in non-working condition. I don't do a lot of testing prior, because I'd say probably 85-90% of these that I get are, are not working and, and there's no reason to do a before because it doesn't power up. HOT blown, uh, no high voltage, what have you. So I don't do a lot of testing prior, um, but uh, on this one we'll be able to do that. You know, and now that I think about it, it, it didn't strike me until just now that I should probably look for maybe bulging caps on this. I didn't see any initially, but I didn't, I didn't look that hard for them. Um, no, no bulging caps. Everything looks intact. Alright, um, it worries me that it's just had some service done by some company called All Good. <laughs> Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman's worked on this apparently. Uh, keep waiting for that show to come back on the air, but it's been it's been so long. And Bob Odenkirk had a heart attack, I think, so the show has been kind of postponed for a while. But uh, if you don't watch Better Call Saul, you better watch Better Call Saul when you get a chance. All right. Well, let's go grab a 27-inch tube and fire this puppy up and see what it's doing. And then we can figure out what's happening and uh, go from there. Okay, get on there. Another common failure point. Uh, is the header pins for the, the connection for the remote board because it's so stiff and hard to get on and off of there a lot of times those headers will crack the solder uh, so I always reflow those as well and the, the most common the most common failure point for solder joints on these chassis are the power connector because of this type of power connector it wobbles back and forth and wobbles back and forth and the headers uh, and the solder on the connection for the power is one of the most important pieces that you want to try and reflow when you take these out and work on them. All right, let's go grab a tube and get this hooked up and see what we get. Okay, so here we are. I have it installed on the 27 inch tube dedicated for the 7500. And this is the original, yikes, look how brown and that's just insane. This is the original frame. Uh, this was sent to me. And ironically, see how it says GT4? I happen to have a mark here on this tube that says G4, so it's crazy. But yeah, this is a, a tube that I'd had no chassis, uh, but you can see that the pan here is a different one. This is, um, I guess originally it might have been that color. I don't know, this is pretty bad. But anyway, this is the one that came with the chassis. We don't need it because I actually have the pan already installed here and we have, uh, it had the original transistor still here already mounted on the frame, so that's hooked up. We have our uh, anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, and remote. So our Crucial 7 there. Uh, again, this is medium resolution only, so we have to use our test pattern generator. Uh, we'll set it to medium resolution. You can see there's a switch here for uh, standard and medium. So we have it over to medium. Let's turn this on, and let's see what it does. One, two, three. It does in fact turn on. What uh, do we see? And it does indeed have some collapse. And it does, and it does indeed have an all red image. Uh, let's see if we can adjust this out here for the hold. Um, let's adjust our horizontal hold here. There's a pot right there for horizontal hold. Right there, each hold. Let's see if we can adjust that out here. Okay, so we're locked on there. But 
something odd is happening. Can we adjust vertical hold? Um, vertical hold is locked on. Horizontal hold is locked on. And we've got some type of terrible problem here. Um, let's go back and see if we can adjust our H hold again. Oh, there we go. Got it. Whoa. That's weird. So right there, the test pattern generator is off. And it's just, the refresh rate's going crazy. But it's just, an, from here down in person, it's just all one big red screen. I turn it back on. Something, now we've got, wow. Um, let's turn our contrast and brightness down. Contrast all the way down, brightness all, okay, there we go. Okay, I think we have R811 problems because right now brightness is completely all the way down. If I turn it up, it gets bright, it gets bright, and then it disappears. So brightness down, contrast down. Let's turn our screen pot on our flyback down. Uh, if I can get in there on this stupid thing. What the heck? I tell you, let me get you on the tripod, and then we'll uh, I'll do some adjustments, see what I can figure out here. Hang on. All right, let's see what we get now. Uh... Okay. Turn that to. Let's leave that there. Um... Brightness, contrast. Okay, so now we don't get an image that disappears. So contrast stops bleeding right about there. So brightness is all the way up, contrast right there. Uh, we don't really, we've got some, it's not collapsed. It's just the linearity is squished. Let's try vertical position. Oh, that's as high as the vertical position goes. Um, vertical height. Yeah, see, it's not collapsed. It's just a linearity problem. See, I can increase... It doesn't collapse on itself. It just appears to be like a linearity problem. So if we bring this down to right there... Uh, each position, width, we have width control. So right there, yeah, I mean right there is the square image, but it's the higher you go, the more it, it, it squishes the linearity gets wrong. I'm gonna take that that pincushion board. I mean, I'm gonna just remove it right now and see what happens. Yeah, see, it didn't, with this out of here, it really makes absolutely no difference. All this does is adjust, adjust the, the curvature of the image. So right now with this removed, it just goes back to a completely square. I just wanted to see if maybe this is possibly causing a problem. But uh, yeah, I mean, I can even reinstall it uh, while it's running. Hang on. There you go, it's reinstalled. As you can see, not much of a difference. Okay, well now that we see what's going on here, um, I'm contemplating redoing the cap kit and just seeing if maybe one of the caps that was installed was the wrong rating because that would absolutely cause a problem like this. There's no linearity adjustment on the uh, on this series of chassis. There's no linearity adjustment. So, the, And it's slowly getting redder and redder as it warms up. And it's doing some weird things that I don't know if you noticed. It was kind of flicker in there for a moment. So we definitely are able to duplicate the... Uh, it's not a collapse problem. It's a linearity problem. We're able to duplicate that issue as well as the all red screen. So let's get it back off the tube here. And do some poking around. Some inspect... Oh, there. See, it flashed a lot more red. <laughs> um, I think... I, I, I kind of want to see if maybe I can swap neck boards here. Um... 
You know what? I'm going to see if I can fit this uh, 7400 neck board and slop, slop, <laughs> slave, slave and swap, combine means slop, slop it onto this one and see if it's a neck board problem because that'll help us troubleshoot. It won't, it shouldn't affect the linearity issue, but it might help us with the color problem. Um, so let me, I'm going to cut away here and get this neck board swapped out and see what that does to our issue here. All right, so here is the original neck board. And here is the K7400 neck board, or 7400. Uh, as you can see, clearly different. This is the much newer design that has the uh, better heat sink fins. And this is our original one, uh, 27 inch 7500. So let's go ahead and see if this does any difference. Uh, I'm very curious. Let's turn this back on. I turned it off in the interim. And here we go. One, two, three. Hmm, probably too dark. Yep, neck board problem. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's turn this back down, turn that back down. Let's turn our flyback back up a bit. Uh, well, right about there. Okay, contrast. Right about there. Brightness, that's pretty good. Well, would you look at that? As suspected, neck board problem. So it is handy to have some extra parts, of course, on hand when you're troubleshooting these chassis, but um, as suspected, yeah, that was it. So now we got to figure out if it's, the, uh, if it's the transistors that are bad or if it's possibly the... Uh, RGB encoder or the capacitors are wrong. I, it could be anything. So we'll have to narrow, try and narrow this down. It's always fun trying to troubleshoot neck board issues on these things. But so now we got to figure out what's going on with the linearity problem. So let's get this back off the tube. I'm going to go through the cap kit, verify that there's nothing wrong with the ratings. I have I had one in prepare in preparedness or in preparation. I actually have one sitting here I was going to throw in, but I didn't realize until unwrapping it I'd already had one. But I'm about 99.9% .9 sure someone has the wrong rating of cap installed somewhere because that would explain this uh, linearity issue. So I think uh, otherwise it's working. So let's get it back off the tube and troubleshoot, see if we can figure out our neck board problem, figure out our uh, linearity issue, and see what uh, becomes of that. So here we go. Well, I've been on quite the adventure here the last uh, hour or so uh, with this all red problem. And I pretty much have the, the issue figured out for what I assume. We'll find out when we go to test. But here's the breakdown. Normally when you have all of one color, whether it's red, green, blue, if it's all red, all green, or all, all blue, usually one of your main transistors is shorted. If you're missing a color, one of the transistors is open. But there's a lot more to this than just these main transistors. There's actually three sets of transistors. There's the main ones, there's these three right here, one, two, three, and these three here, one, two, three. If any of these three transistors here, here, or here are shorted, you'll have all of one color. Uh, it's very rare to have any of these fail. It's almost always these. Now, if any of these three sets are open, you'll have a missing color. Uh, so if you can actually Eliminate all these as the problem. You can move on to other things. So all three of these tested correct and the same across each other in circuit and out of circuit as well as all three of these, all three of those. So all nine of these transistors checked correctly against each other in circuit. I didn't take them out of circuit, but they all tested correctly against each other. So I don't think it's any of these three, these three, or these three. So at that point, I moved on to the color pots. And I wiped them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like I always do to kind of clean them up. And after doing that, I set them to max setting. So right now, max setting, max setting, max setting. They're all maxed out. Um, so then I went through and measured the pots. And let me show you what's going on here. I'll zoom in a bit. Okay, so when, the, when they're maxed out across these two pads, you should have 1K. They're 1K ohm pots. You should have 1K or close to it. This is the blue one. And we got eh, 800 ohms, about, you know, 
0.8K. We'll call that close enough. We'll round up to 8. It may not be all the way maxed out. Um, but that, So there's 1K. This one should be 0. There you go. Now here is the green. We got 800 ohms, close enough to 1K. We'll call it all right. 0.8K, and then we got 0. Now here's the red. Uh, 867. We'll call that close enough. We'll round up to, round up to 1K, and this should be 0. 1.5, close enough. Yeah. So, you think, okay, it's fine, but that's not what I originally read. Um, when I read this the first time, I had, t across these two pads, should have been 1K, I had 10 mega ohm. When I went to this pad, I had 10 mega ohm. So, I had 10 mega ohm across all of the pads for the red pot. I'm like, okay, the pot's bad. So, I removed the pot. Uh, this one, I removed the pot and set it aside. I took the green pot out and moved it over to here. So this is the pot that was originally in the green spot, and I tested it, and it still read 10 mega ohm across all the pads. And I thought, oh, that's kind of odd. So uh, instead of putting the original red pot back in the green spot, I slaved in a new one, a replacement one. Just a replacement one from a donor board that I have here. This is the original uh, green one that was in here. Um, I put a known good one in here just to make sure, just to rule it out. Uh, since I, this, since we know it's not the pot, uh, this was the original one that was in green. I put it in red. It still read the 10 mega ohm on each leg. Uh, instead of put, taking this back out and or putting the original red one back in here, I was suspect of the red one anyway. So I put a replacement in here just for shits and grins. Uh, but so you saw there that all three of these now read correctly. So at that point, I'm like, okay, the only other th only other thing in the circuit that could possibly be bad would be the encoder chip. But I have seen before where some of these polycaps around the encoder chip are broken that cause color problems. So I inspected all of these polycaps and everything around the encoder chip and everything actually checked out. I've seen, I've seen these be broken here. I've seen this one be broken. I've seen some of these be broken. All that checked out. So nothing on the neck board actually checked bad except that red color pot. And it, uh, that was the only thing I could find that was actually out of tolerance or, or suspect. So I took the encoder chip out. Uh, here's the original encoder chip. I took it out. With it removed from the circuit, it read properly. I had the one. I had the one K, one K, one K, and the zero, zero, zero. So th at that point, I knew the encoder chip was bad. So I put a brand new encoder chip in there. From I had actually, I actually had two in stock. So I put a brand new encoder chip in there. After doing that, you saw everything read properly. So I'm fairly certain that it was the encoder chip lag, like I might have said, I think I mentioned it prior. It's been so long since I made that first part of the video. Uh, I think I mentioned the encoder chip might be suspect, but yeah, I think this actually is the problem because now I'm reading properly. So um, yeah, with the, with the red pot out, it read good out of circuit, but it read bad in circuit. Same thing with the green one. So it wasn't the pot. It absolutely, it absolutely was not the pot. I'm pretty sure it was this. So now, I mentioned also before that a lot of these chassis don't like the color pots up more than maybe about 25%. So we're going to put all these about 25% and uh, we'll leave them there for our color adjustment. And they should be somewhere around 300 ohms. Uh, no, I take that back. 20, 250. 25% uh, of 1,000 should be about 250. So these should all read about 250 is where I want to try and keep them for our, our, our uh, initial adjustment. Uh, 280, okay, fine. 280 and 270. Hot damn, I'm good. Close enough. So I'm going to put this back together and clean it up and reflow and fix the pads and do everything I'm, I normally do and then kind of show it off later. Um, but for now, I think I'm fairly confident that the problem of the red screen was this bad, enco this bad encoder chip. Uh, so I'll get this all back together, and then we'll show it off, all the repair and all the, the work done to it. And then we'll move on to the main chassis over here, try and figure out that linearity issue, and go from there. So I think we got this part of the problem, problem licked, easy for me to say. I think we have this part of the problem licked, so let's uh, get this back together, work on the main chassis, see if we can get that linearity problem solved, and hopefully get this 100% operational. Well, and the main chassis is now completely redone. I decided to go ahead and install a brand new cap kit, even though all the other caps were original. There were two that weren't, and I'll get to that in a moment. 
Uh, but I did a full inspection, full reflow, a full new cap kit. I didn't see anything on the back side that was suspicious. Uh, there weren't any, uh, you know, oxidized pads or broken traces or bodge work or uh, component legs bent over to make a tr new trace. There wasn't really anything that I could see that was immediately wrong with it. I tested everything that needed to be tested. I couldn't find anything wrong. The vertical IC checked good. Of course, we know it does because we had deflection. just had the linearity issue. Uh, so I didn't really notice anything wrong. I didn't find anything, didn't notice anything. I still need to clean up and everything before we uh, do our testing. But I didn't notice or find anything wrong. Except, uh, this is that one cap that was over here, the, the 100 volt 22. And I don't, it's... This is that one that looked kind of odd. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. What exactly... Yeah, it looks like it got hot maybe and this slid over. I don't know what... It, who knows, but this was odd. But what I did find was that there were two caps that weren't changed. There was a 100 volt 4.7 bipolar cap that goes right here. That was not changed. I put a new one of those in there. And then over here. These two caps here are part of the vertical deflection circuit. Uh, this cap here is a 63 volt, 33 microfarad, and it just so happens that cap was not replaced. This is the original 16 volt, 33 microfarad cap that was in that spot. This was an original cap that was not replaced when whoever did the cap kit did the cap kit. So there were two caps that were not changed out, so I, I uh, of course put brand new ones in those locations. Other than that, I didn't, uh, let me rephrase, other than that, I didn't notice anything that was out of the ordinary. Um, so I did the reflow and the inspection and the cap kit and all that jazz and uh, gosh darn it, hang on a second. Uh, okay. So I think what I'll do now that we've done everything we need to, um, I you know I checked all the stuff around uh, U701. Sometimes you can have broken components around there, the poly caps and stuff that cause linearity problems. The linearity coil itself is in good shape. It's not broken or bent or missing the magnet. Uh, so now that we've done everything and checked everything, um, I am ready to go ahead and hook it back up and see. And if we still have our linearity problem on the top, where the top is kind of squished compared to the rest, we'll have to troubleshoot further. But I'm fairly confident that it's that this cap right here, the 63 volt 33, not being re replaced, uh, but the other ones were. Uh, all the caps that were replaced are the, were the correct rating. So it wasn't an issue of an incorrect cap, an incorrect rating. I think it was probably because that one cap that wasn't changed might be slightly out of, out of tolerance. Um, and it's, it's absolutely in circuit with the vertical IC. So I think what I'll do is we'll put this back together, get it back on the tube, turn it on, cross our fingers, and hopefully our, our um, linearity problem is solved with the cap kit and the reflow. And our red issue is solved by the rework on the neck board. So you can see here that I've got all of the rework done here on the neck board. I got all of the transistors reinstalled. They're nice and, and secure and they are uh, straight. They're flat. Resistors realigned. All of these are secure. I can bend that one a little bit, but not too bad. Um, yeah, so that's replaced and repaired. Uh, we talked about the new... Um, I've been, I've been uh, breathing in too much solder. The encoder RGB. <laughs> I've been breathing in too many <laughs> solder fumes. I've got an extractor here, um, but yeah, just my brain stops working sometimes. So new encoder chip. Uh, we do the troubleshooting and determined that that's our most most likely our issue. So I got all the caps changed on this one, all the rework and everything done on this. The reflow I reflowed all of the header pins like I talked about, and on the main chassis here I reflowed the same header pins here and the header pins for the remote board that I talked about and reflow everything else, anything and anything that needed reflowed at all. So I think we're ready to put this back together and cross our fingers and try it and see what we get. So let's do just that and find out uh, if our efforts have been successful. So here we go. Oh, I forgot that I've still got this board. You may have noticed it wasn't installed. I had it set off, set off to the side so it wasn't in my way and forgot to reinstall it. So let's go ahead and just, even though we know it doesn't make a difference, I'll put it back in because it's supposed to be there. Uh, okay, now let's hook it back up to a tube, see what we get. All right, so here we are, all set up, ready to go. Chassis reinstalled, original neck board is reinstalled. We got all the rework done. 
Uh, we got anode neck yoke ground video power remote, the critical seven. We have our test pattern generator hooked back up. Let's go ahead and turn it on. We've got our multimeter set up here to read our B plus in case uh, it's not around 117. I want to make sure that it is. And if it's not, I doubt that I'll be able to actually adjust it because it's covered in the glue there. And focus up. There you go. It's covered in glue. And I'll have to replace it if it's not close to 117. Uh, and there's all the original caps. Like I say, the only two that weren't replaced are that uh, 63 volt 33 right there, the black one, and the 4.7 volt 100. Uh, 4.7 microfarad 100 volt so hopefully it was one of those two that was causing our linearity problem and hopefully that uh, bad encoder chip was the cause of our over overly red screen so nothing to it but to do it let's turn it on and cross our fingers and see what we get one two three all right it comes back on at least that's a good sign of 120 oh well what do we get what do we get oh crap <laughs> crap well, at least our linearity problem is fixed. Look at that. We have uh, no more linearity issues. And if I adjust our height here, um, yeah, look at that. No more linearity. So let's adjust our vertical position right there and adjust our height right there. Okay. Still have width control? Yep. Uh, all right. So right there is a perfect... A little bit more, a little bit more, right there. Okay, right there is a perfect square picture. Looks fantastic. No more linearity problems, so I'm absolutely confident now that that 63 volt uh, 33 cap here was the problem on that. Because uh, this was original and not replaced, so we changed out the full cap kit. I can't say with 100% certainty that that was the cap, but being that was the only one that wasn't replaced, I'm fairly confident that was probably the problem. Uh, but there's all we got all the caps changed out so it looks like our linearity problem was caused by a cap a cap issue which i was absolutely confident about but this darn red screen i was certain that that rgb chip was the cause can we adjust the red does that do anything well it does somewhat it affects the the white balance so that's all the way off. That's all the way up. It's hard to tell on camera. Hmm. Well, let's put it back at 25% like the other ones, roughly there. Well, gosh darn it. Okay, well, we'll have to take this back off and troubleshoot further. I'll leave all this hooked up, but I'm just going to take the neck board off and we'll work on the neck board and I'll set this aside. But that's kind of disheartening. I thought for sure, oh, look at our B plus is down to 118.7. That's close enough to 117. We'll call that okay. What does our shutdown read? Um, let's take this off of here before I blow something up. So we, our B plus is good. So we know that. Let's see what our, right here is a test point for the shutdown pot. And if I recall, it should be 0 0.01. So if we Attach this to here. Well, easier said than done. Stupid thing. There we go. Okay, so our test, we're hooked up. Should be 0 0.01 and we're at 0 0.02. That is close enough. I'm not going to mess with that. But if you had to, uh, you would adjust your pot right there. And you would adjust it and test at this test point to achieve a 0 0.01 but we're at 0 0.02 that's close enough um, so our shutdowns adjusted close enough and our B plus is good so everything appears to be dialed in on the main chassis I'm happy with that but we got to figure out what's going on with that neck board causing that red so let's get this turned back off and see if we can figure out what it is since it's not that encoder chip I don't know I'll dig further here and we'll see if we can't figure it out Okay, jumping back in here on the troubleshooting process, as you can see, we still have the red screen. Uh, but something I noticed that's interesting is that the red transistor is ice cold. The red uh, control resistor is ice cold. But the green and the blue are both very warm. The resistor is very warm. But for some reason, the red resistor and transistor are ice cold. 
So it's, I had all these off. You saw before I had all these removed. So I think I just got very bad luck by putting the original bad red one back in the red spot. <laughs> I, I can't say. Because both in and out of circuit, all these transistors read identically. They're, this one doesn't read open, doesn't read shorted. It reads the exact same as the other two. So uh, unless it's just simply faulty, even though it reads okay, that's the only explanation I can come up with because we know it's not the pot, we know it's not the encoder. I went through off camera and checked um, every component and diode and resistor and transistor and everything and compared it to this one from the 7400. Everything checks good. Couldn't find anything wrong. So I turned, I hooked it back up just to see what difference any of that tr testing and troubleshooting did and it's still the red screen. But I did notice that I didn't, something now I didn't notice before was that the control resistor and the transistor are just completely ice cold. There's, they're not working at all. So I need to probably just replace this transistor and see what happens. But usually when the transistor is open, you have no red. And when it is shorted, you have all red. So I can't explain why the image is overly red if the transistor is bad. It's not open and it's not shorted. So maybe this is some type of rare instance where it's just faulty in a way where it's causing the overly red screen, but it's not actually open or shorted. That's all I can come up with. So I'm going to go ahead and swap the green with the red and see if it changes to an all green screen. And that will tell us with 100% certainty that the transistor is bad. So let's do that real quick and see what kind of result that gives us. Well, the problem is actually getting worse. I swapped the red and the green transistor. It made no difference. I thought, okay, well, let me just take the red transistor out completely. So as you can see, the red transistor is out completely. So we should just have green and blue. But now we have an overly green screen and blue. So we have an issue with green and red. <laughs> so, so with red, I don't, I don't understand. So with the red installed, I have an overly red image. I think it's actually, well, it's, it's overly red. If I take the red transistor out completely, now I have overly green. But the blue seems to be working the way that it's supposed to. So now I have a problem with green and blue. If I go back to, let's see, if I go back to this page here. See how different this is without the red installed? Um, if I turn my contrast back down, let's go to here. See, now I have overly green. Uh, but if I touch the blue transistor, watch the blue here. See what? And it's hard to see, but you can't really see it on screen. Um, the the image is jumping. The image the image jumps around when I touch the blue transistor. I can tap it, and the image. And it's hard for you to see. You can kind of see it jumping around. I touch the green one, nothing happens. It doesn't happen with the green. So I've got issues with green and blue. I'm sorry, the green and the red circuit. There's something happening with the green and the red circuit on this neck board that's just not working. Now, again, um, let me turn this off. <coughs> Pardon me. If I was to... Let me swap the neck board again with this K7400 just to make sure that it is, in fact, a neck board problem again. So hang on one moment. So now the 7400 neck board is on there. Here's the one that we're having issues with. So let's turn this on and see what it shows here. Yep, perfectly fine. So we absolutely have a problem with this darn neck board. So we have issues with green and red. I did notice that the transistor is it's even still warm. The transistor is working. Uh, however, it's interesting that the blue resistor is like really hot. The green train. I'm sorry. The, yeah, blue resistor is really hot. The blue, the blue resistor is really hot. The green resistor is like lukewarm, uh, but the red one, of course, was still completely dead because of the transistor being gone. So we've got issues with green and red. Um, I don't think it's the. It's not the transistor because I swapped them and it made absolutely no difference. So that goes back to my theory of all the transistors actually read correctly. So I don't think it's the transistor. We know for a fact it's not the encoder chip because I it, this exact same thing was happening with the original encoder chip and with the new encoder chip. We know it's not the pots. We know it's not the transistors. We know it's not the resistors. I checked those. Um, so I guess the next step is to maybe possibly start swapping these little uh, PNP and NPN transistors around. See if maybe those are the culprit. I, I don't know, but the plot thickens. So we got green issues and red issues. So um, 
stay tuned. We'll see what we can figure out. Okay, making somewhat progress. I thought the, the socket might have been the issue, so I swapped a new socket in, a replacement socket from my donor board. It did not fix the issue, so I replaced both of the little uh, transistors here that are above the green and the red main transistor, this little transistor there, this transistor there. I changed them both out with the ones from this donor board. And after doing that, I got my green back. So that, this transistor was bad that was causing no green. However, I still had the all red image. So I took out the main transistor. So right now the neck board is fully working, um, with, but there's no red transistor installed. And what I mean by that is that I now have green and blue. So no more red image. I got my correct green and blue. If I go back to the main screen here, you can see no more red image. And if I scroll to the colors, obviously no red, but there's the red screen, got nothing. And then we got green, blue. So uh, let me go ahead and just kill this here. There we go. So now, as soon as I put the red, this transistor back in, I get the all red screen again. But it's not the transistor. I've put three different transistors in there. So now we got to figure out what's going on. So I've already changed out this little transistor that was common that was the issue with uh, no green, which I thought might have been the issue of the of the all red. I can't say, but so those have been those have both been replaced now. So the next step in this evolution is to possibly replace this little transistor down here on this neck board and see what we get because we're making progress. So now I have now the neck board is working the way that it's supposed to, but without the red transistor in there, of course, we're not going to have red. But when I put this back in there, I get the all red. So it goes back to the original problem. So I got to dig a bit deeper here and see if I can figure out why we get the all red screen with this installed. I know it's not this. And I know it's not this right there. So now we have to go back and do some more troubleshooting. I know it's not the uh, pot. So I'm going to replace this transistor here that controls the red off of the uh, neck connection here, off of the main chassis, the ribbon cable from the main chassis to this chassis, or to this neck board I should say. Uh, red follows through, goes through a couple of resistors and ends up at this transistor. So I'm going to slave in another one of these transistors onto here and see what that does and then reinstall this and see what happens. So stay tuned one moment for that and see what that accomplishes. All right, so I successfully swapped out that transistor I had mentioned and it made no difference. So basically back to square one. At that point I went through and tested every component over again, every trace, every pad, and did everything humanly possible and I eventually found the problem. I had mentioned before that this resistor for the red was ice cold. The transistor was ice cold and the resistor was ice cold. And we know it wasn't the transistor, we know it wasn't this little transistor, we know it wasn't the little transistor over here. We know it wasn't the pots, we know it wasn't the uh, encoder chip, and I was about at a loss at that point, and had already checked the resistors for the correct uh, resistance. They all read 2.7K, everything was fine. So it wasn't until I got to the back of the board and began testing, you know, from this trace to here, and this trace to here, and here to here, and there to there, and so on and so forth. When I went from the pad here, the resistor actually goes from this point right there up to this point right there. So across those two points is where the resistor sits. So you'll see here that right there where it says R530 there's a trace and so that that point that point there should reach to that point there. So I went from you can see here that it's all bridged but I went from here to there check good here to there check good here to there it was open. It turns out that trace that pad was broken off the trace from somebody pushing on the resistor at some point in, in the past, you know, taking the neck board off and on, whatever. Uh, we know it wasn't me that did it because we had this problem before and we still had the problem afterward. And after I installed a couple of capacitor legs to jumper this pad to that pad, just like these are all, these are just big solder blobs, but I put a couple of uh, component legs. Let's see if I can show you here. Um, yeah, there you go. So you can see there that that most inboard resistor there, uh, from the bottom pad to that top pad, uh, across that trace there, that bottom pad was broken off the trace from somebody, you know, pushing on the resistor and popped that pad off the trace. 
So after uh, putting those that, those component the component legs across there and jumpering from this pad up to that pad, we have a working chassis, working neck board, working chassis. No more uh, overly red. No more linearity issues. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, convergence screen. We've got full convergence. Everything's working and looking great. Linearity is perfect. So we have a fully repaired chassis, and I'll tell you, this was one of the most frustrating ones I've had come across the bench in a while because, you know, you just pull your hair out and pull your hair out trying to figure it out. It ends up being a, a broken pad off of a trace. And, you know, having this resistor be cold should have been a nice uh, clue, but the, if the transistor is open or the transistor is not functioning, the resistor is going to be cold. It's not going to operate if the transistor is not in being told to turn on. So having the, the cold resistor isn't necessarily indicative of a bad connection. It's indicative of an open transistor or something else. So I didn't think about testing that trace because I had already reflowed it. Uh, but it, when I, the, the pad was still connected to the board, but the trace was broken. So reflowing the pad didn't loosen the um, reflow on the pad didn't loosen it from the board and it didn't help me reconnect the trace it was just that's what it was it was a, a broken trace on that resistor that was causing the open and we also had the bad uh, little transistor here for the green so it was a double fold issue there so we had that bad transistor for the green broken trace for the red on the resistor we had uh, bad caps causing uh, linearity issues but after all of the repair and the, and the reflowing and the rebuild and the cap kit and the repair on the neck board, everything all hunky dory, all done, we now have a fully working uh, chassis. So there we go. Let's turn down the contrast a bit. Uh, there we go. That's good. Okay. Um, let's hook up an actual PCB and see how that looks and get some stuff dialed in. Just make sure everything's working and. Uh, See how that goes, so hang on one moment. Okay, so we got a cruising USA board hooked up. Let's see what we get. Oh, already the <laughs> contrast is too high. Uh, there we go. Uh, brightness. Brightness is uh and we're upside down. Son of a son of a gun. Brightness contrast all the way down. Let's turn up our flyback here. If I can, uh, there we go, that'll work. Uh, let me flip the vertical coil here. Okay. Now we're cooking. Okay. Brightness, contrast. Uh, H position, vertical position, height, that's pretty good, right. nice, that looks sharp, I think the H position's off a bit. I may have to put the original neck socket back on because this thing's popping a bit, but I think that might have been the reason. The reason that this became a spare is because I think maybe the neck socket was popping. But uh, I'll put the original back on and we'll do some more testing. But for now, uh, it's working. All issues have been resolved. Uh, each position, uh, width, yep, width control. Uh, there you have it. That looks damn good. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, colors are actually pretty balanced. Like I say, they're both, or both, they're all, they're all at 25%, uh, which is what these chassis usually like to have them set to. You know, anything more than about, anything more than about 25%, they tend to bleed and have problems. But if you have a working R811 that's in spec, and you have uh, all of your color pots set to about 25%, it usually looks and works pretty pretty good if you have a good working picture tube. 
if those settings don't work and it's still bleeding in problems you, you may have a picture tube on its way out but uh yeah there you go thanks for watching hopefully you learned something this popping is uh most likely that neck socket i'll have to whoop sorry i'm gonna end up putting this original one back in and see if it still pops but for the purposes of this video uh the repair is complete so thanks for watching hopefully you learned something i know i do we always do um like share and subscribe if you want i appreciate it and stay tuned for the uh 1000 subscriber viewer special